So we got 2.1a. We're going to talk about zero exponents. We're going to talk about negative exponents. Uh, let's get zero exponents out of the way because it's nice and simple. Some of you might even already know how to solve a zero exponent. So, okay, good question. So you don't, you don't have to draw a line or anything. Your paper should already have a left, a tiny left-hand margin. Maybe if you have graph paper, probably not. I don't usually ever write anything over here. If you love Cornell notes and that's your thing, set it up however you want. Whatever you're comfortable with being able to read your own work, I'm fine with, okay? I'm not gonna be coming around and checking your note structure to make sure it's what I want. I don't really care, yes. Yes. Or I have scratch paper for today. And then All right. So the first note, any number. Also, I write pretty fast, but I will give plenty of time for you to copy it down. Don't try and like write down as fast as I'm writing down. It'll be okay. So any number or variable raised to the power of zero is equal to one. The notes? Oh, good. So you don't have to do all the different colors. If you have different colored pens, great. Uh, it'll be fine not to, to not to use colors. Okay, that's all right. All right, let's take a look at an example of this. Pretty straightforward though, right? Right. Let's do four to the power of zero. That is going to be equal to zero. I mean one. One. Ladies, you all right? Yeah. Are you sure? Okay, let's settle down. <laughs> all right. Four to the zero power is equal to one. Any questions on that? Pretty self-explanatory, right? What if we had negative 14 to the power of 0? What's that going to be equal to, everyone? Not negative 1, just 1. That's a great assumption, though. Great assumption. Jordan, good job for assuming that it would be minus. That's totally right. The reason why uh, is because it doesn't matter what the number is. It could be negative 2 or positive a million. I mean, one, she's not. Okay, that's all right. Anything, anything at all raised to the power of zero is equal to one. Okay, what about 3,265 to the power of zero? That's going to equal one. And yes, I would like you to write all of these examples because it's important to know all the different types of things that are going to be equal to 1. Now if we have a fraction, 3 to the 4th raised to the power of 0, what do you think that's going to equal? Sure, that works, because 1 over 1 is just equal to 1. Any number. Is a fraction a number? Is a fraction a number? Yeah, of course it's a number. So even if it's a fraction and you raise it to the power of zero, it's equal to one. 
doesn't matter how long the number is, how small the number is, whether it's a fraction or negative, it equals 1. Yes, sir? If it's 0, does it equal 1? Oh, 0 to the 0th power? That's what I'm asking. Great question. 0 to the 0th power is what we call undefined. Have you ever heard of the term undefined? Yeah, you have. So it just means it doesn't exist. And I think it was this class that asked why anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. I think it was this class. It sounds familiar. I will explain. We can explain it after 2.1c because the, the way that it's explained, you need to learn 2.1c to even know what I'm explaining. So we'll get there. Don't worry. It's really cool. It'll make sense. But for now, just know if it's raised to the power of 0, it equals 1. All right. Now let's do negative. When a number or variable... is raised to the power okay guys focus up to the power of a negative exponent all we're going to do it's pretty simple we're going to flip the numerator and the denominator keep the exponent the same as in don't change the number but we're going to make the exponent positive. All right, so that's a decent amount to write. I'll give you some time. That's OK. Your whole notebook is all for you in this class. Oh. Uh, not, not. What if you got a, 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 a subject name? Um, so the thing about sharing subjects in a notebook is that if your history teacher collects your notebooks and all your math notes are in it and you have a math test to take, you don't have those notes, right? Right, but I don't have another class in here. This is new. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. But I know for a fact if you have like Miss Smith, Mr. Horner, uh, who are the other history teachers? Miss Christopher. They all pretty much, I think, do notebook checks. Yeah, yeah Miss Blitz. Yeah, her too. I think they all do notebook checks. So I would recommend not putting your math notes in your history notebook. I already do That's okay. That's okay. At least it's the first day enough. At least you didn't tell me um, If you need one, Janae, I can help you out. That's okay. You can keep them in there for now. Okay, that's fine. All right, where were we? Everyone got this written down now? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I didn't realize it was so far down. There you go. My bad, my bad. All right. Okay, we should have that written down now. That's okay. Keep writing. 
Let's take a look at example E. That's all right. If your hand hurts, take a writing break and just listen to this example so that we know what we're going to do. Let's say we have 3 to the power of negative 2. Three to the power of negative two. That is an E, yes. So the examples are all letters. A, B, C, D. Now we're on E. So this definition or this little explanation here says we're going to flip the numerator and the denominator, keep the exponent the same, but make it positive. Well. I think we have an issue with this problem, right? What's the issue here? It's a negative exponent. That is an issue for sure that it's a negative exponent, but what's the problem with our first step? Adrian? It's not a fraction. How do we flip the numerator and the denominator if it's not a fraction? Adrian, we can make it a fraction. How do we do that, Adrian? Bingo. You guys are too smart for me. 3 over 1, there we go, to the negative second power. So we're going to rewrite it as a fraction. So if you need to, if you start out with just a whole number like 3 or 10 or negative 4, Write it as a fraction first. That's going to make flipping it so much easier once you're getting started. And we'll go over the shortcuts in a bit here. So that's our first step. Flip the numerator and the denominator. Perfect. We're going to keep our exponent the same. Oh, wait. We didn't even flip it yet. Sorry. Got ahead of myself. Let's flip these two. And that's going to give us 1 over 3 to the negative 2. So we flipped them and kept our exponent the same. Right now the negative 2 is not on the top, it's on the bottom because we flipped them, right? And then the last step is just to make our exponent positive. 1 over 3 squared. That's it. No, I mean, that's not the end of the notes, but I mean, that's it for this problem. That's all we have to do. So if you're concerned that things might be getting all jumbled up because all your writing is in pencil. Again, I'm going to post these notes to Google Classroom. You can access them at any time and read through them if the colors are kind of helping you connect the ideas more. This video of us going over this will also be posted tonight. You don't have to watch it. You were here in class, so you really shouldn't have to watch it. It's more so just for if you miss a day, it's recorded. If you are out with COVID or something, it's recorded. Um, if like maybe another reason why the recording these is helpful, maybe you know your parent wants to help you with your homework, but they don't really know how. Your parent can watch the video and learn along with you too. So tons of benefits. You don't have to watch them though at all. If you're here in class, you really don't have a reason to, unless you want to review. All right, example F. Any questions on E here? What is 3 squared equal to? Um, three Nine, right? Kaylon, let's face forward. So if we wanted to take this a step further and actually evaluate it, we could say it's equal to 1 over 9. But let's just keep it like this for now, just so I know you know what to do. Let's try this one. X to the negative fifth power. It's 
What is one? How do you know that? Where, where, where are you getting that? Because someone else said that today too. Really? Yeah. In our our class or in your other class? Oh. I don't know. X can be anything. It doesn't always have to be one. Oh, Miss Chung, they used to say one. Miss Chung would say that X is always one. Yeah. Hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. Simmer down. Simmer down. What's up? Oh, I know what you're saying. This is what you mean. The number in front is always one. Yes. Okay. There we go. That makes a lot more sense. Thank you, Crystalyn. That was awesome. So, so yes, I know what you're saying now. So X, just so we're all clear, because that was a little confusing for everyone, including myself. X can be anything. We don't know what X is. In elementary, you just used to see an empty box that you would put a number in the box, right? That's because they didn't want to confuse you with letters yet. Now, it's just a blank space. X can be anything. We don't know what it is. But if X doesn't have a number in front of it, the coefficient is always going to be 1. Yes, so great job with that, Zalia. So our coefficient's 1. For this particular problem, though, it doesn't even matter, which is great x to the negative 5. All we're going to do is rewrite this as a fraction. x to the negative 5 over 1. Right? Because we have no denominator here. We're going to flip these around. Giving us 1 over x to the negative 5. And then we just make our exponent positive. So our answer here is 1 over x to the fifth. And I'm actually going to... I'm going to write that out just to avoid confusion. We'll just leave it like that. So take a look at E and F. Look at how we started. We had 3 to the negative 2, and we had x to the negative 5. And look at where we ended. 1 over 3 to the second and 1 over x to the fifth. You guys checking out that pattern there? Yeah. Are we seeing what's going on? All you have to do is put 1 over it and then make the exponent positive if you don't have a fraction. Let's see what happens when we do have a fraction. It's actually easier because we don't have to make our own fraction. Let's do 2 over 3 to the power of negative 2. Just like that. And I'll move this up. There we go. Just like that. Make sure you draw parentheses and put that exponent outside the parentheses. It changes it, remember? So now, we're going to do the exact same thing we did in F, except we don't have to add a denominator. Let's just flip them and go. Let's flip 2 and the 3 around. So now we have 3 over 2 to the power of negative 2. And then we can just make our exponent positive. How come this negative 2 didn't flip down to the bottom when we flipped our fraction? Because it was in parentheses. There we go, because it's outside the parentheses. So we're talking about the whole fraction, 3 over 2. Not just the 2, not just the 3. The whole fraction is being raised to the negative second power. 
So you can go ahead for right now, leave your answer like this. However, if you think back to our warm up, this is the same as 3 over 2 times 3 over 2, which is equal to 9 over 4. Exactly. So I just put simplified above those two fractions. Questions on G? How are we feeling about the fraction? Not too bad, hopefully. Feeling great. Show a thumbs. Thumbs up if you're feeling confident. Thumbs side, sideways. Thumbs, thumbs sideways if you're feeling iffy. Thumbs down if you're not not really with us. It's moving. Okay. All right. That's all right. Um. Is there any? Is there, uh, up to this point? Is there any specific thing I can clarify for anyone? I know it's nerve-wracking to ask a question in front of everyone. However, uh, take pride in the fact that someone else is probably wondering the same thing you're wondering. And if you raise your hand and ask, then you're, you're helping that student out. But you don't have to ask. Just saying. Let's do example H. Yeah, we're going all the way to Z. No, 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 we're not going all the way to Z. It's <laughs> we're stopping at I. Two more, two more, two more, don't worry. You said we're stopping at I? Yeah, it's the next one after H. Stopping after I? Yeah, after I. Oh. All right, go ahead and write down H. We'll get there, don't worry. That's a great thought. I said three times. Wait, Okay, we're almost done. We got two examples. I want you guys to have a lot of time to work. So, this, this is where it gets a little confusing. So let's make sure we're paying as much attention as possible. What do we notice that's different between G and H? Besides the fact uh, that we don't have a fraction. Jordan? There's no parentheses. There's no parentheses, right? So up here, that negative 2 applied to the whole fraction, the numerator and the denominator. But here, it only applies to x. Negative 3 is only attached to our variable. Why is that important? Well, let's see. If we have 2x to the negative third over 1, right? First step is to write it as a fraction if it's a whole number. And then we're going to flip them, right? We're going to bring that numerator down in into the denominator and the denominator up into the numerator, okay? But we're going to leave this 2 in the numerator. Just like that. Now, get that copy down and then we'll explain why. So, take a look back at example F. We have x to the negative fifth. What was our coefficient in front of this x again, Zalia? What did we say it was? One. One, right? What did our numerator end up being in our answer? Uh, one. One. Okay. So, our coefficient became our numerator. Everyone with me on that? Yeah. Our coefficient became our numerator. What's our coefficient in H? Two. Two. Our coefficient becomes our numerator. Whoa. Just like in F, okay? 
We only flip it if the exponent's attached to it. It's not attached to the two here. It's only attached to the x. So we can bring x to the third down, but we gotta leave two up top. Uh-oh. Uh, another way you could think about this is, let's just take the two away. Let's do it, let's write it like this. This might be uh, more beneficial for you. Two times x to the negative third like this. And then we again leave that two out in front. Write our x uh, as a fraction. Yeah. Can you see that? OK. So the only difference between our original example h and this way is we split the 2 in the x and drew a multiplication in the middle. Didn't change anything, just split them apart. We turned x into a fraction over 1. Now let's go ahead and flip this one. 2 times stays. And then we have 1 over x to the third, right? Now if we wanted to bring these back together, we just multiply the 2 times the 1 which would give us 2 over x to the third. I would write both of these just so you know that you have two options if you get stuck on a problem like that on a test. Yep. And we're actually, we're not going to do example i, so that'll be the end right there. So please make sure you finish copying this down. Don't just put your pen down because I said we're done. Finish copying this down so you don't have to worry about it later. Wow. Um, this gets passed up. It's classwork. You sh you'll be able to get it done in class. We have 20 minutes.